listened to us this morning. Um, as Franz mentioned, I'm Chris Hall. I'm the Account Director for Mighty Scottish Government Contract. Um, this is a role I've recently taken on, having spent seven years working in our PFI business previously. Um, Raymond, Gary and Gavin will introduce themselves in a bit more detail as we come on to their sections in the presentation. Um, but firstly, we'll just give a bit of an overview as to why we're here today, um, what we're going to talk to you about, and um, hopefully give you the opportunity, as Fran says, to ask some questions of us both during the presentation and um, and at the end of the meeting. So I'm aware that um, there are a number of you who already trade with Mighty that are on the call today. Uh, so a lot of what you will hear today, you know, you may be familiar with, but hopefully it will open up some opportunities across perhaps accounts that you don't currently operate in or indeed the wider Mighty business. Um, and, and for those of you who don't trade with us, hopefully you'll find today informative. It'll give you a bit of an understanding of, of what Mighty do in Scotland, how you can support us in delivering what we deliver to our customers, and indeed how you can um, become a supplier of Mighty and help us to deliver maintenance projects and small works to all of our customers. So a bit more about today. Um, thanks, Gary. Um, you can just roll on to that agenda slide. Um, We'll talk to you a bit about Mighty, an overview as to, to who we are, what we do, um, and then some specific detail around mine and Raymond's contracts across Scotland, and indeed um, the projects that are headed up by Gavin's division, um, which support Raymond and I to deliver to our customers. Gary will then give a bit of an insight into procurement with Mighty and how indeed you can become uh, a Mighty approved vendor and support us in what we're delivering. Next slide, please, Gary. And again, so the first part of the, the presentation today, we'll just talk a little bit about Mighty, and that starts with our vision and our values. Um, I'll not dwell on this too much, but it's something that's important to us and that we ask our supply chain to embrace when they're delivering to our customers. So we've got five key principles there, as you can see on the screen, and I'll not run through them each in detail. But like I say, we, we are keen that these values are throw, flowed down through our supply chain to our customers and very much that you are part of Mighty when you're delivering on behalf of us to our, to our customers. Thanks, Gary. So Mighty at a glance, this is quite a busy slide, um, and I'll not, again, go through this in, in minute detail. Um, the slide deck will be available for people to have a look at after, so you can spend some more time on that. This gives a, a few headlines around the business, um, our headline revenues, our headline numbers in terms of sales, and indeed team members. Uh, a big part of that recently being our acquisition of InterServe FM, which has bolstered our position in the market and um, indeed provided more opportunities for both Mighty and supply chain alike. So you can see some of our key customers there um, listed in the middle section. And both myself and Raymond manage um, a number of these across Scotland, which we'll talk to you more specifically about as the slides move on. Thanks, Gary. Some more headline numbers around technical services there. So you can see, you know, like we're a, a vast business. Um, we, we touch a lot of bases, we deliver a lot of services, um, and, and we maintain a number of assets for various customers across Scotland. We do self-deliver a number of these services. However, supply chain is a key part of what we do, um, particularly when it comes to delivery of, of projects planned and reactive maintenance. So you can see that the sort of vast array of uh, services that we can deliver across Scotland and that we're looking for our suppliers to engage with us to support in. Thanks, Gary. So we'll move on now and I'll hand you over to my colleague Raymond. Raymond's the Regional Director for Scotland and I'll allow you to introduce yourself, Raymond, and, and tell everyone on the call a bit about yourself and what it is you're delivering. Good morning, everyone. My name is Raymond Murray. I'm the Regional Director for Mighty's Technical Services and IFM divisions within Scotland. We are, uh, we, we look after a number of accounts, as I say, um, all across Scotland, the, the, the length and breadth of Scotland, uh, and indeed some of my accounts go into England as well, but primarily today we're, we're talking about Scotland. I think it's important to say that um, each one of these customers that you see on the screen here, and there are more than this, but each one of them, we, we deliver a different range of services for everyone, <clears throat> very much tailored to what the customer needs. So if our customer's looking for 
a particular service and we're contracted and to do that, then we do it. But to be honest, we will do whatever our customers ask us to do. So sometimes we get involved with um, elements that are out with what the what the contract says. So we need to be agile, we need to be flexible. And that in particular is when we, we look at uh, getting support from our supply chain. Um, and we look for them to be flexible along along with uh, you know to support our, our, our activities. So we see here some of the clients, and um, I pick a few. City of Edinburgh Council top left is a is a relatively new one for us. We started in October. It's hard services only, technical services, um, and it's about 350 properties growing all the time. And uh, we're taking probably about a thousand reactive calls a month on that contract and they, they vary widely as to what the requirements are. And it's one where we've got particular requirements at the moment in terms of support from our supply chain. And <clears throat> Registers of Scotland is a new contract. We're actually mobilising it at the moment. There's a big site in Edinburgh and Meadowbank and another one in Glasgow. And we're, we start that in June. And again, we're, we're just trying to really sort at the moment what, what exactly uh, the customer wants us to do um, and how we're going to do it and who we need to support us in that. Uh, Scottish Parliament is one of our longest standing contracts. We've had that for, for many years now, um, more than a dozen years. Um, we're in the middle of a third term, I think, with them. Um, so uh, that's a, a very important and prestigious contract to us. Um, up in the northeast, uh, northeast Scotland College, we do a range of bundled services, engineering and soft services. We would call it cleaning and other other services, landscaping and different services. West Loading Council is quite a new one as well. Um, we just won that a few months ago. That schools, particularly uh, all in, in and around West Loading, ten schools. Um, and Skills Development Scotland have got a range of offices across Scotland, uh, north, east, south, and west. Um, probably about 80 different sites. Uh, uh, Heineken's a relatively new one as well, Edinburgh based. Um, there's an office there, a big office there, head office in uh, Edinburgh Park, I think it is, or the Gale, uh, and then uh, a brewery in, in uh, Edinburgh. And we've got the Thames Brewery as well in, in, in Glasgow. So, and, and lots in between there, so lots of others. Flip on to the next slide, please, Gary. Some other contracts, Rolls Royce that I know many people will be familiar with, Lloyds Bank. Um, we Lloyds Bank, they're, they're not all the accounts are on here, but there's a lot of uh, high street uh, contracts that we do, as well as Lloyds Bank. Um, we've got a sort of man in a van service, as I would call it, um, where we go, we do a number of uh, contracts at, oh, through the high street, um, where we, we, we do retail, principally retail customers. Uh, GSK is a big site, big site in Irvine and one of Montrose, um, which is more in industrial, of course, in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, Sky, you'll be familiar with, I'm sure, uh, based in and around uh, Livingston and in, in uh, Fife. And the BBC has got a big, uh, big site in Glasgow, which you'll be familiar with. And as I say, there are many more b besides this. is just a, a snapshot of the technical services clients. There are uh, my colleagues in soft services, so cleaning, security, and the like have many other contracts. But our role is within hard services, technical services. So that's why we're concentrating on that today. Next slide, please. So um, the range of services that Mighty cover are many. They're probably getting towards 100 different service lines that we undertake and we subcontract out. Um, I'll pick a few of them out. Security, uh, cleaning, we are the number one provider in cleaning security and engineering maintenance in the UK, the largest FM company in the UK now with the acquisition of InterServe. So as much as we try and self-deliver, as much as we can, we always need our supply chain to support us in that activity. Uh, landscaping, we have our own landscaping business, but again, we look to try and get support in that where, where we need it. We need to flex um, uh, and we need uh, support in what we call small works or projects. Gavin's going to talk to you about projects, but, but quite often there's a gap between the reactive jobs that come in, uh, then there's what we call small works before we get to the larger projects that Gavin will talk to you about. 
Um, we have a waste management division as well, so we look after waste management as well. We have a catering division called Gather and Gather, um, and we've got a front house division called Signature. Um, and in fact, you go to somewhere like uh, Sky, for example, um, whilst you might go into to Sky and and you you'll meet people who are who are doing a variety of services. The likelihood is that Sky and Lloyd's Banking Group and others like that, the people, although they may have a different shirt on, will actually be mighty people because we undertake the full range, total FM, we call it, for our customers. Next slide, please. In terms of our engineering services, this is just breaking it down a little bit further, mechanical and electrical engineering. And there's a lot that comes within that that some of you will, will undertake, I'm sure. Uh, the likes of HVAC or gas uh, and maintenance, perhaps electrical maintenance specifically. Um, doors, we look to subcontract that uh, almost exclusively. We've got a mixture of self delivery and subcontract and roofing, for example. Painting, we try and self deliver as much as we can, but we always need support. Building fabric is an area where Quite often, we look for support from our supply chain uh, to, to support us in that. Um, energy and controls, we do we do a lot of that ourselves, but again, we do have quite strong support, strong supply chain support in that arena. Uh, and, uh, you know, principally in, in terms of the plan maintenance, we try and do as much as we can ourselves, but there will always be specialist services, there will always be niche services, uh, there will always be uh, support that we need because of the volumes that we have to undertake and the time scales that we have to undertake the work in. We have a lot of KPIs and SLAs that we have to hit and we really look to our supply chain to support us in that from a maintenance perspective. Next slide. Back to you then, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Raymond. Um, so, as I've touched on, where Raymond covers a number of accounts across Scotland, I'm, I'm dedicated to the Scottish Government, um, and we have approximately 70 sites across Scotland. There are six key sites which are based um, between Glasgow, Edinburgh and Aberdeen, which are the, the larger um, static sites, as we call them, across the account. And there are a, a vast number of smaller outlying sites around um, all regions of Scotland up to the islands and, uh, and the islands. So as a result of, of that sort of um, the type of estate, I am reliant on supply chain support. And we're looking at the moment to um, bolster our supply chain to give the customer confidence that we have sufficient coverage across as many trades as possible across the nation. Um, we do have a strong supply chain at the minute, uh, but there are areas that I feel that we could be doing with some stronger support for both planned and reactive maintenance, but indeed um, for project work and small works alike, where Gavin will be tendering um, a number of projects throughout the year, and, and we would like to increase the competition and prospective tenderers across all of those works. So that's part of why we're here today, to sort of drive that for the client and to show that um, you know, we, we're we looking to expand our network and promote that healthy competition for the work that's coming out of the account. Um, so just, just to add a bit to that, as well as delivering to the core Scottish Government estate, we deliver to a number of their strategic partners. I've listed them uh, there within the slide. These are um, organisations such as Social Security Scotland, Education Scotland, Transport Scotland, and a few others listed there that you can see. Thanks, Gary. If you can move to the next slide, please. So some key information about the contract with the Scottish Government. We we recently were successful in winning the contract again, uh, which we previously held for another initial seven years plus potential three extension and two plus one format. Um, it's an NEC4 term service contract, uh, which, which is focused around collaboration with the customer and the client. And as you can see, I touched on previously, there, there's a high volume of small works and projects that are delivered through the account that I look after. So. This is where we're really trying to, to drive that um, supply chain support to ensure that we've got coverage uh, through Gavin's team to deliver everything that the government require of us. And something that I'll come on to in a bit more detail, uh, and my colleague Sarah would have delivered as she'd been here today, is social value. It's a big part of what we do in our public sector contracts. 
uh, and, and indeed joining this the supplier development program is a big step forward for us in terms of um, acting upon those public sector contract commitments um, and aligning ourselves with promoting that economic opportunity across Scotland. So we'll talk a bit more about social value later on in the presentation, but it's a big part of what we at Mighty deliver for our public sector customers. And indeed, we're looking for our um, supply chain partners to support us in delivering that as well. I noticed a question come in there, so I'll just um, see if I can have a look at that. So Darren, you've asked there if we require specialist services such as concrete repair, ground remediation, stabilisation. Yes, indeed, um, services like that would, would be required under certain projects, um, depending on, on what's been instructed by the customer. Um, Gavin, I'm not sure if you want to come in at this point and um, perhaps talk about any projects that might require that or have required that type of service in the past. Um, yep. Hi, Darren. Don't know where you're from, but yeah, we certainly do. So the, the purpose of today's um, webinar is really to introduce us to you all. Um, we're interested in all trades. We're interested in people uh, who have companies in all parts of Scotland um, because the Scottish Government and uh, our other customers have a very big uh, campus um, locations across the country, and we look after projects that range from um, groundwork, civils, uh, repairs to car parks, to external cladding, and all the way up and through buildings to uh, roofing projects and um, and even things in, in rivers like fish counting, river weirs, etc. So we're looking for specialist contractors, single trades, main contractors, uh, people that do uh, absolutely everything in the construction uh, and property industry. We may not have a lot of those specialist projects throughout the year, um, but we do need um, special suppliers when those projects uh, come up. Thanks, Gavin. Darren, hopefully that's uh, that's helpful, but if there's anything else you'd like to, to ask, just drop it in the chat and I'll get back to you. Okay, um, move on for me if you wouldn't mind, Gary. Thank you. So again, this is just a slide um, with an overview of what the, the core contract covers. Um, a lot of this Raymond has touched on. We deliver um, the full suite of services to the Scottish Government um, across engineering, cleaning, landscaping, waste, security and projects and minor works. So it's a, it's a full FM contract that we deliver for the Government um, and as such we're looking for support in, in all of those service areas. I'll just um, pop back to the questions. So, Karen, what value of works are available? So, uh, it's wide ranging. Um, we we can be delivering projects that are twenty, thirty, forty thousand pounds, um, or we can be delivering projects that are in the millions. Um, so, it really depends what the client are instructing. But um, my core FM team deliver what we call small works, which is typically anything up to twenty five thousand pounds, depending on specialism. It may go to Gavin's team. Um, and then typically anything above that financial threshold will sit with Gavin um, and, and his project managers to deliver. So, like I say, that could be could be anything from, you know, 25k up to a couple of million pounds, depending on the scope of works. Uh, Ross, will there be any opportunity to bid for water hygiene analytical lab services, Legionella? Yeah, so water hygiene uh, and Legionella is something that I look after on the account and that, um, that Raymond may deliver across some of his as well. Um, we will potentially be looking at um, the delivery of the maintenance services and the risk assessment works related to water hygiene in advance of year two. Um, so there, there may well be scope in the contract to be having a look at that. Okay, thanks Gary. <clears throat> And this slide's a summary of our, our sort of um, key collaborative goals that we're working alongside the government to deliver, um, with the key headings being safety and well-being, value and innovation, sustainability, which is obviously a big one at the minute, um, community and smart working. So um, just picking a couple, sustainability is, is a key driver for us all, both uh, within Mighty and uh, across our customer base, particularly the Scottish Government. Um, and we're looking to support our customer on, on their route to net zero, as we call it. So energy projects are a big thing. Um, we're looking to explore how we can support the government in decarbonising their estate. 
and this is likely to be a focus area for us moving forward. Um, and similarly, smart working, um, a lot of FM is moving towards um, remote analytics, remote servicing um, and monitoring as well at the minute. So again, that's a focus area for us to try and drive value um, and also drive drive the service the customers getting, reducing um, you know requirements to attend site for minor fixes that we can now do remotely, for example. Okay, thanks, Gary. And that's just a brief overview of my account team, um, which I'll leave within a slide deck just for reference. If anyone needs it, I will not bother going through that in detail in a minute. Okay. And I'll hand you over to Gavin now. Um, as we mentioned, Gavin's our projects director. All the, the larger scale projects run through Gav. So um, over to you. Any of the slides? And um, I'm hoping everyone can hear me. Yeah, I'm calling in from you. my phone. You can hear me? Okay, cool. Uh, so, Gary, are we on the slide that has the um, the logos on it? Yeah. We are, okay. All right, so I'll take everyone through uh, projects, what we do, how we kind of work, um, and then do throw any questions. Uh, uh, the whole point of today is really to um, expose you all to Mighty and to the work that we do and to encourage any of you that you would like to um, you know, explore an opportunity to become a spire on Mighty uh, and uh, be involved in some of the projects and small works that we've exposed here in our um, contractors and our, our, sorry, our customer base tell you a little bit about that and then we can work through that in due course. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, health and safety that is our number one priority, um, a little bit about how we would go about tendering, what's important about how um, suppliers have a really high quality contract and site management process, a um, little bit about billing and then uh, future plans. So Gary, if we move on to the uh, diagram uh, page. Um, what this uh, shows you all as suppliers is how projects integrates within the FM business in, in Mighty. Um, as uh, Raymond and um, Chris mentioned, we're a, uh, a support service that sits uh, slightly outside the FM team. Uh, where the FM team doesn't have a project management function, then we're here to support. So that could be on the Scottish Government or that might be on uh, Magnox or Sainsbury's or the Ministry of Defence. And our role is to work with the FM team or on behalf of the FM team as our internal client and with the FM customer directly. Um, our role uh, takes the project right through from end to end. So typically we'll get a, a, an email or, or a brief from our customer that will say, I want to do this. Uh, we don't know how to do it or how long it's going to take or what it's going to cost. Can you uh, in Mighty Projects help us to define that brief? Uh, develop a, a design scheme or a specification that we can tender out and then engage uh, a supply chain that we can monitor um, all the way through to the end of the project. We would go um, through our supply chain, work with where we have an internal design uh, scheme within Mighty, we might uh, work with them, but equally we need a really robust set of um, professional services in our supply chain that we can work with, so that could be quantity surveyors, uh, M&E consultants, um, principal designers, um, architects, interior designers, uh, anyone who can provide a professional service. Um, and if you're a small SME based in Scotland, then we're interested in hearing from you. We'll work with those professional services, those consultants to develop a design scheme, and then we'll tender that work out to uh, the construction uh, team, construction contractors. Again, we've got some internal mighty self-delivery businesses that uh, Raymond mentioned before. Um, um, where it's appropriate to do so, we would uh, tender out to our supply chain and include any self-delivery functions. And where we do work with internal mighty businesses, uh, we treat those internal businesses with the same uh, diligence and, and rigor as we would uh, external uh, contractors. So that there's fairness, parity, and we uh, show transparency to our customers that we're getting best value for them. So we take the project all the way end to end. Uh, Gary, if you can go on to the next one, which is about health and safety. And in everything we do, health and safety is the most, uh, is the highest priority for us in, in, in projects. In Scotland, we're seen as leading the way, uh, often in mighty in terms of the way that we manage uh, construction projects. We're more and more often in our FM uh, customers being asked to take on the role of the principal contractor. 
um, and we have a very robust way of doing that that has been reviewed by the health and safety executive and seen as appropriate to uh, a project management function within a facilities management company um, providing customers with robust um, construction project management and principal contractor duties. We make sure all our own project managers uh, are SMFTS qualified um, and we review all our own um, project managers and our own contractors uh, and we expect you guys as contractors and suppliers and consultants if you'd like to become on our supply chain to share our aspirations of health and safety being the highest standards. So really important to see that your uh, your site supervisors or your working foremen are really highly qualified, uh, appropriately experienced and that you're managing um, health and safety. And it's not just a, a paper tick box, but it is a positive health and safety culture that you're demonstrating matching our culture. Gary, you can take us on to the next one, which is all about quality, because quality is really, really important to us. We, we're all only as good as our last, last project, uh, and that goes to the same for Mighty. Uh, our customers don't have to uh, always give us the project. We have to deliver a high quality um, project management service. So we audit ourselves in, to our customers to understand how we're doing. Are we doing a good enough job uh, in terms of project management, in terms of cost control, uh, or do we need to improve? And again, uh, we want to make sure that where suppliers on this call are interested to come on board and work on those opportunities that are ranging in, in value up to many millions of pounds, that you're going to really have the highest quality uh, possible in terms of your uh, structures, in terms of your processes, that you, you know, meet all the appropriate standards. Uh, and in terms of those social benefits that Chris mentioned earlier on, those are an element of quality too. Those demonstrate quality and integrity that you're investing in your people, you're investing in your uh, local community, um, and that those things are reflected in the quality of the work and the people that you have uh, with us. Uh, moving on, Gary, to um, CDM compliance. So I said that the most important thing for us is uh, health and safety, because that will then feed through in terms of um, the quality of, of the work that we get back. Uh, it's really important that if you are interested in being a supplier to us, that you that you have a long, hard look at your processes, make sure you have all the appropriate uh, policy documentation in place, particularly that you have the ability to develop and maintain and manage a construction phase plan, um, that your um, processes and health and safety culture is you know, a real and true thing. It's not just paperwork that we come and look at on the site, but that you're actually embracing it and that you're training people, that you're looking for issues and that you're trying to fix those issues. <clears throat> when, uh, whether or not Mighty is acting as a principal contractor, we must have suppliers who also can act as the principal contractor as well. And that demonstrates does um, a high quality of, of contractor, an understanding of the construction design and management rules, uh, an understanding of how to implement those rules and how to um, control and uh, ensure zero harm and, and safety. You must be prepared to um, manage your site directly. Uh, you must always have site supervision on site. Uh, if you're subcontracting work out, you must have your own site supervision in place to manage those contractors. Uh, and important that <clears throat> we're not, uh, we do allow subcontracting but we're interested in working with contractors who are mostly um, delivering their own work. If you do subcontract work out, we'll be expecting to see how you're vetting those subcontractors in the same way we vet uh, you as suppliers. We want to see you flowing that um, high quality standard, that vetting process all the way down. And then lastly, in terms of the, the CDM compliance, we want to be seeing suppliers who are uh, self-auditing, carrying out their own inspections whether that's a daily, weekly, or a bi-weekly check, um, not only on site, but in your office, checking uh, document storage, checking that your um, your processes are being met and that you're, you don't need Mighty to chase you or be on your back to check that these things are in place. So really important at CDM compliance, if you're thinking about uh, exploring our relationship with Mighty, um, we're going to be expecting to see some really, really high standards of uh, health and safety around the CDM regulations. Okay, Gary, I'm on the next one about uh, principal contractor. This is my last page. 
uh, really just to explain that role um, about principal contractor. We're more and more often acting as a principal contractor in MITEI, uh, and we do that by uh, having a very close collaborative joint relationship with our, our supply chain. So there are aspects of being the principal contractor that MITEI will do, um, but we would expect um, our contractors to be directly involved in that, prepare with us a construction phase plan. We will make sure that we are um, developing the arrangements of the project, what that project is, but we would expect the contractor that we're uh, tendering out that work to and it has been successful um, to be able to prepare a construction phase plan that demonstrates with us how you're going to arrange, manage, uh, monitor and secure your site. So it's just a wee example there of that collaborative arrangement that allows MITEI to act as the principal contractor, but still uh, procure construction work for, through our supply chain. Um, and I think that's me, um, Gary. I think you can move on. Got a question there? Um, do yes, we do have an accreditation, actually, um, Karen. So um, we are starting to ask all our suppliers to uh, become part of the Alchemist Safe Contractor um, National Scheme. We think it's really important um, that all of our suppliers uh, demonstrate that um, that standard of health and safety through a scheme. And having someone as part of one um, uh, one national scheme that's accredited independently, then that will that will do that for us. We will still be looking to check independently on a project by project basis that um, a contractor is competent to carry out that particular uh, standard. But as a minimum, yep, we'd be looking for a safe contractor. Uh, and I think Gary might be telling you a little bit about that. I'm not sure, but I, I believe there's a. Um, uh, there's, uh, if you speak to Alchemist, I, I think they will also support you through that journey. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Um, okay. Yeah. So just moving on to talk a bit about social value and community benefit, which I, I briefly um, touched on earlier in the presentation. Um, this this slide is centred around Scottish government. How it's, however, it's important to say that um, Raymond also has a number of um, public sector contracts within his remit, and. Um, across all of those accounts, Scottish Government included, we have um, some targets that we, that we are committed to meeting around um, social value and, and benefiting the communities in which we work. Um, a large part of that, of course, uh, is, is engaging with local companies working in those areas. But we're also looking further than that. We're also looking at how we can directly impact um, socially, economically and environmentally the, the areas and communities in which we work. So we've got a number of key objectives that we're working towards. Um, and, and indeed, um, five of these key objectives are, are there on the, the diagram that you can see. Um, we're looking to, to give opportunities to people, increase the well-being, create sustainable inclusive growth, reduce inequalities and create a more successful country. So we're looking for our supply chain to, to join us on that journey and help us to deliver uh, the commitments that we made within our lead contracts to our, our public sector customers. And um, something that I'm really keen to explore, and I'm not sure if there are, are anybody from these organisations on the call, but as supported businesses and social enterprises, um, it's, it's something that we're looking to grow our connections in and, and try and support. Um, traditionally, we, we haven't traded a lot with supported businesses. Um, I think they are quite niche. We, we are aware that social um, supported businesses rather deliver in certain arenas, but there is certainly opportunity across the Scottish Government account and potentially um, some of Raymond's accounts to um, engage with supported businesses. So I'd be, I'd be interested to hear from anybody that, um, that's engaged with supported businesses or social enterprises in particular. So just moving on to the next slide, please, Gary. So how you can support us, as I mentioned, we're looking to our supply chain to support us um, or on our mission in, in terms of social value and simple things. Um, we, we do a lot of volunteering. Um, we, we offer labour and supplies for community projects. Um, we've been working alongside my colleague, Sarah Howard, um, doing a lot of good work, particularly in the Edinburgh area uh, and the Lothians in, in terms of community projects and our supply chain have been supporting us in that, which is great to see. Um, there's also a piece around training um, and apprenticeships, which our supply chain can support in, together with things like career guidance and, and job vacancies, etc. 
Is there anything else you'd like to add around that, Raymond, in terms of um, in terms of support from the supply chain and social value and community? I think you're on mute. <clears throat> Oh, sorry, Gary's not on mute. I'm not sure why we're not no, hearing. No, Ray Raymond's on mute, I think. Isn't oh, he? Raymond's on mute. Sorry, there we go, Raymond. That's Apologies. It. Thank you. I know many people over the years would probably have liked to have muted me. <laughs> like that. But, uh, yeah, um, just one thing, Chris, really, and that is that, uh, as well as the things you mentioned, I think it would be uh, remiss of me not to mention that we also have uh, some charitable efforts that go on and uh, where we try and use the, the 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 power of mighty the breadth that we've got and scope and scale that we've got to support some charitable events and in fact to that end we have our own event once a year the, the mighty ball which is really at the pinnacle of that that's coming up in september uh, and we're always um open to support with that so probably more on that to follow chris okay thanks raymond um, and moving on, Gary, I think that might bring us to your section on uh, on procurement and working with Mighty. So over to you. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Um, so I'm Gary Regan, uh, purchasing manager at Mighty. Uh, I guess very quickly, 30 years of procurement experience um, at Mighty uh, for nearly a year, supporting our procurement colleagues, category teams on these types of projects, giving guidance and uh, and resource to these types of projects. So. Um, in regards to uh, suppliers and, and how to become a, a, a mighty supplier, and so uh, mighty in the in the process of, of setting up a, a digital supplier platform. And for those of you that are are, are mighty suppliers at the moment, you may have um, encountered the the old system uh, Tradex. Uh, that was used to basically uh, log all the supplier information. Um, and Mighty have, have changed that now, and we're moving to a system called Cooper, um, which will take care, take care of all that onboarding process, uh, storing the supplier information. And actually, Cooper is all encompassing. We can do our orders from Cooper. We can hold contracts in Cooper. So it's not just about uh, supplier onboarding. And so, with that, um, I'm going to say for all those interested in being on the Scottish Government Framework Project um, along the discussion, and I understand it's probably not a quick decision, you'll need to um, review uh, the information in the slide deck, perhaps, you know, in the next few days or the next week or so. But essentially, if your decision is that you need to, uh, you'd like to sign up to the framework, could I please ask you to send this information into the email box that is listed below? I have access to that and I will be uh, monitoring that. If you are a mighty supplier at this moment in time, you won't need to go through the onboarding process. Hopefully you've already been migrated onto the uh, mighty system, but I would still like to know if you you are interested in being on this framework. Um, a project for for Scottish government because again you know for information purposes we'd like to put to Scottish government actually how we're covered across our trades and services so that you know that bit of information is very critical to us as as well so uh, again if you're if you're not a mighty supplier if you could supply me with all that that allows me to get onto the Cooper system and then insert those um, that information, and then you'll be sent to an alert, an invitation to basically supply more information. And when I say more information, it's just a bit more detail, like your bank details and that how we pay you and 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 those types of things. Um, as Gavin's already mentioned, um, as of the first of December, um, Mighty has chosen Safe Contractor Alchemist um, to vet all its suppliers, and it's making sure they're that um, all suppliers have the, the relevant insurances documentation in place. Uh, it's a subscription um, that we ask our suppliers to sign up to, um, but it's a way of, of mighty checking that uh, everything is in place for us to be able to use you as, uh, as suppliers. Um, my dealings with Alchemist so far, very proactive company to work for and will work with you to go through that onboarding process and that uh, and, uh, and that verification. Um, Mike, you also also work um, at, 
uh, a contractor management policy. I, again, I won't read it all through. It's a very busy slide. Um, but essentially, um, we have a policy that outlines the service levels expected uh, by our customers and ensure that the work is done in a safe and reliable way. As you're aware, our customer is Scottish government. Um, so the so this information is just just for future information. It is really um, us at this moment in time um, trying to get um, suppliers across multiple trades and services signed up to the framework um, project so that we can relay that information to Scottish Government and be ready for when those projects are released. And that's the end of the presentation. Perfect. Thank you. That was amazing. That was a lot of information.